rotational moulding and rotational casting are two ways to make hollow parts with thin walls, as opposed to normal casting methods which generally produce objects that are completely solid. It can be used to make objects ranging from very small to very large in size. A two or more part mould is partially filled with plastic powder or liquid resin. This is then rotated slowly, coating the walls of the mould evenly with the resin. In the case of roto moulding, the mould is heated to melt the resin and then cooled to solidify it. Roto moulding is usually an industrial process. With roto casting, room temperature setting resins such as silicone and polyurethane are used, removing the need for heating and making this method more accessible for hobbyists. The mould needs to rotate about two perpendicular axes at different speeds to spread the resin evenly over the entire inside surface. Note that if it were to rotate at the same speed about both axes, this is equivalent of it just rotating about a single axis and would lead to uneven coverage. A ratio of around 4 to 1 seems to work best for most mould shapes. Most DIY rotocasting machines are based on the same type of design. The mould sits inside a rectangular frame, which sits inside another rectangular frame, which sits inside another frame or support structure. The rotating frames are usually driven by some arrangement of gears, belts and pulleys. Whilst there's nothing wrong with this design, it's simple and reliable, but it does take up a lot of space relative to the size of object it can make. This might not be a problem for some people, but I'll only use my machine occasionally and want to be able to pack it away when not in use. So I decided to do away with most of the structure. Here's a welding tip for making a perfect 90 degree angle. Make it as two 45s. Before welding, bend it to a perfect right angle. Weld the inside of one joint. The weld will shrink as it cools, pulling this angle inwards. Mark how much it has moved. Flip the part over. And bend it open the same amount past 90 degrees. Now when I weld the second joint, as it cools, it will pull it back to 90 degrees. A perfect right angle. The arm will have a pivot at each end, consisting of a hub with an axle running through it supported by a pair of bearings.
This hub will remain stationary in the column of the machine. It will be held in place by bolts tightened in this slot. The other hub is attached to the far end of the arm. This will be the main axle that will turn the whole arm. At the far end of the arm will be a small faceplate to attach moulds to. This will rotate on a second axle that has a pulley keyed to the other end of it.
The reason I turned this small band earlier was so that I could use it to indicate the spindle in and turn the bearing journals true to the faceplate. The axle is turned to be a close sliding fit inside the bearing races. To drive the machine I'm going to use bead chain. This is the stuff that you often see used for keychains, ID badges, bath plugs etc. The advantage of this over regular roller chain is that it will bend in any direction instead of just in one plane. This means I can run the chain around the corner using only a set of idler wheels and I don't need to use bevel gears to transmit drive through 90 degrees to the far pulley. It comes in many different sizes and is surprisingly strong. The size I'm using is 4.5mm. This is the same size that's often used for roller blinds. I will need to make a pulley to go at each end of the chain. One will need to be four times the size of the other to get the 4 to 1 ratio. This groove in the centre of the pulley is to clear the links between each bead. I'm cutting the pulley teeth on my CNC mill. The tooth shape is very simple. It's just an arc about the centre of each bead. The G-code to generate this toolpath is very simple too. This small pulley will remain stationary and the chain will rotate around it. It will be attached to the hub and the axle for the arm will pass through the centre. The larger pulley is made in the same way. The big pulley has 52 teeth and the small pulley 13. Bead chain is normally joined into a loop with one of these connectors, but that poses a problem since the connector won't go around the pulleys. I'll solve this problem and finish the machine in part 2 of this video, but that's all for now.